There are plenty of people across the country worried that Robert Mueller's days setting up the Russia investigation are numbered, but the House Speaker apparently is not one of them. The special counsel should be free to follow through his investigation to its completion without interference. I've received assurances that his firing is not even under consideration. And he can take that to the bank, like the time the president gave us assurances he wanted to raise the legal age to buy a gun, or assured us he would release his tax returns, or that Mexico, of course, would pay for the big, beautiful wall. In short, while Paul Ryan may be sleeping more soundly, something I'll talk more about later in the show, you'll, get, well, you'll forgive the rest of us if we're still a little on edge, because as California Congressman Eric Swalwell put it, Actions speak louder than Sunday morning shows or tweets. He has a number of... Uh, my colleagues, uh, Republican colleagues in Congress, all the way up to Paul Ryan, who are enabling uh, the ouster of Bob Mueller. Swalwell is among those who've been calling unsuccessfully for Congress to step up and ensure Mueller is protected in his job. But while Trump's keeping his eye on Mueller, it may be a trio of women who pose the bigger threat to the president. Remember that lawsuit the president wanted thrown out, the one filed by former Apprentice contestant Summer Zervos, who said Trump sexually harassed her and groped her? Well, a judge ruled today that suit can go forward. We also learned this afternoon that Stormy Daniels, the porn actress who's gone public with her claims of an affair with Trump, despite her non-disclosure agreement, passed a lie detector test about that story back in 2006. Oh, and ex-Playboy model Karen McDougal is suing to break her NDA after an alleged affair with a then-future president as well. Joining me now to talk about all this are former U.S. Attorney Carmen Ortiz, who served under Barack Obama. She's now with Anderson and Krieger, LLP. Good to see you. Thanks nice for being you, here. Jim. Michael Astrew, former associate counsel to George H.W. Bush and ethics counsel to Ronald Reagan. Good to see you, too, Mike. Former assistant U.S. Attorney Dan Small, now partner at Hollow Knight, and the only lawyer to have defended two governors on corruption charges. You know I can never resist that. Democrat and Republican. Th that's that's very nonpartisan of, of you. Carmen, let me start with you. Should Trump be more worried about Daniels, McDougal, and Zervos, or Robert Mueller? I think he probably should be worried about all of them uh, as the process continues. I think um, what we've seen from Robert Mueller, th this is no witch hunt. He's already issued several indictments with the grand jury. Mm -hmm. um, he and is some guilty pleas, Guilty obviously. pleas, uh, cooperation agreements. He just subpoenaed um, business records from the Trump organization. So he is moving steadily and steadfastly ahead. And, and these other lawsuits by these um, women, um, one has gotten the okay to go forward, and there's nothing preventing this lawsuit from moving forward. Bill Clinton had to deal with that with Paula Jones. He did and then And the other two, uh, we'll have to wait and see what the courts say within the, within the next few weeks. Do you share Carmen's concerns that there are threats from both the three women and from the special counsel at this stage? I look at it a little differently. How I, so? I think it's all Mueller. It's all about Mueller. Um, and I think the timing of Mueller's investigation helps make everything else probably a sideshow in history. I think historians will view a lot of it as sideshow. I think this is going to start coming to the head, as I've been saying on a certain highly rated radio <laughs> station, probably late spring. Maybe Why do you early. say that? Well, because I think that Mueller is following a tried and true formula. He's picking off the weak links on the outside. He's flipping them. He's moving closer and closer to the center. And I think the flashpoint is when Trump family members really become, really get in his crosshairs. And I think that's going to be the flashpoint. And I think that's going to be in the next few months. You were nodding in agreement. You agree with that whole line there? Well, I, I, I agree that uh, Mueller is moving forward. I think it's going to take longer than we think. Remember, Manafort hasn't come to trial. He hasn't pled guilty. That's a whole long process. And Mueller is going to want to prosecute Manafort and then get his testimony. But the women, it's not the women. It's the cover-up that's going to, going to get Meaning after them. Meaning that all of these efforts to pay off the women, to keep them from talking, are all coming out now. And these NDA agreements are not going to hold up in court. You can't have a million-dollar penalty for speaking your mind. That's just not what an NDA agreement is all about. Is the, you know, it, it sounds like you think the walls are closing here, and it seems to me the pivotal moment is what Carmen mentioned a minute ago. When uh, records were subpoenaed from the Trump organization, the first time Mueller actually went directly at Trump's businesses. Yes. Was that, that was a pretty important moment, wasn't That's it? That's a very important moment. And Mueller, Why? Mueller has been moving slowly up the ladder. That's what you do in these mm -hmm. investigations. Right. But that's the first time that the word Trump appeared in one of Mueller's subpoenas, and that's a big step. 
Do you agree? I mean, you've led investigations, obviously, like the one we're now talking about. Do you uh, subscribe to Mike's notions about the steps that he's taken suggest the noose is tightening here, for lack of a better expression? Absolutely. It, but it's not only just tightening. The investigation may be getting a little bit broader. If you see what the president's tweets are all about, it all focuses on collusion. He doesn't really st talk about corruption, obstruction of justice, which is a big key. Well, except in this his case. lawyers and Mueller's lawyers allegedly last week were talking about whether or not what he knew about what Mike Flynn did, what he knew about Jeff Sessions did. That's obstruction of justice stuff. I'm um, not the Flynn stuff. The the uh, uh, the stuff vis-a-vis -vis Sessions is potential obstruction. Oh, of justice. we all know right? about that. But when Trump talks, kind of directs his comments, and he's talking a lot, primarily to his base, he basically just wants to keep people's attentions on. I didn't collude. There was no collusion between the campaign. But we see obstruction of justice. We see perhaps money laundering with these requests for business records. I'm sure bank records have already been subpoenaed. You know, I, I, we're all lawyers. I'm the least qualified <laughs> of the three of us, four of us. So I want to say that. But I have to say, even for my... Is this, the, is this the client from hell, Donald Trump, or not? Apparently, the, the notion was, play nice with Mueller. He then does the witch hunt language, and then he puts out this tweet. They're clearly uh, Hillary Clinton supporters, 13 Dems, zero Republicans. Of course, Mueller himself is a Republican. Uh, he is the client from hell, is he not? Well, I think you, you judge that by turnover, and the, you know, the turnover is a pretty good indication. Of his of, lawyers. Of, well, of everybody, that it's just the, the working environment is very difficult. But remember, last summer, Mueller, uh, he was going to fire Mueller, and his lawyer said, if you do that, I will resign. And so it's, yes, it's a client. Again, the, the, uh, the general yeah. counsel you're talking about. Yeah, and Ted Olson just White House refused counsel. to. Uh, well, Ted Olson may be a conflict. Of, uh, there may yeah. be a conflict issue. It may be not so much that he wasn't willing to represent the president, but there were conflicts in his firm. I know what your answer is going to be to this, Carmen Ortiz, but we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> well, if, just a, ask it. You never know. Well, when a lawyer stands up like John Dowd did, and says, in your investigation, Carmen Ortiz, there's nothing here. And the person you're looking into does in capital letters on a tweet, no collusion. Does that affect you at all when you're in your offices meeting with your fellow lawyers, the arrogance of both the lawyer and the person you're looking into? Not really. You really that tune it out. That was a long out. pause, Carmen Ortiz, you tune it let me out. tell you. The, no, you actually really just tune that out. And it doesn't focus. aggravate you to the point that there's not a certain level of aggravation where you turn to the lead lawyer on the case and say, do you believe the arrogance of this guy who we're dealing with? Well, you might shake your head and, and think it's, it's kind of incredible and unbelievable, especially when it's coming from the lawyers. And especially in light of what we just said a moment ago, the indictments, the guilty pleas, the cooperation agreements, um, the additional information that's coming forward, it doesn't make any sense. And, and, and given the history of tweets, especially over the weekend and after those uh, subpoenas went out, it, it seems like he's, you know, panicking or, it, it, you know, you, you appear guilty. Yeah. Uh, he says, I'm not guilty. I haven't done anything wrong. Trey Gowdy said, all these act like you're innocent, essentially. Yeah, I mean, if, you, if you're comp you did nothing wrong, then let the investigation proceed and focus on what your political agenda what is. Yeah. Remember, Mueller is a pro's pro. I mean, I worked with him for a number of years, but he's head of the FBI. He's no stranger to criticism or to controversy. Yeah. Th this isn't bothering well, him Well, getting it from all. the president is a little bit different from uh, normal controversy. What happens if Donald Trump does feel the walls closing, and despite what we believe to be the advice of his lawyers says, Jeff Sessions, you got to tell Rod Rosenstein, fire this guy tomorrow. What happens? What's the reaction? We know constitutional crisis, whatever that means. What's the political consequence of the firing of Mueller? Is well, it Saturday Night Massacre-like? Yes, it'll be Saturday Night Massacre because Rosenstein clearly isn't going to change his mind and fire Mueller, so they'll have to fire Rosenstein, to hire to somebody else, to find a month. you I, both I, agree I, with that? I, yeah, and, I, and I, I don't take it for granted that Sessions would do it. I think Sessions I might, yeah. would probably resign, too. Well, Sessions agree. can't do it, can he, in this case? No, Sessions, right. Sessions can't. That's it's right. 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 it's got to right. be Rosenstein. He would have to you either know, fire, he would have to fire Sessions and hire a new attorney general to then fire Mueller. Right. It's Speaking crazy. of new attorney general, can we talk about new attorney for a minute? This guy, Joe DeGeneva, who a former U.S. attorney like From you. From Washington, D.C. Here he is. Uh, apparently, it's statements like this that caused him to have appeal for his new client, the President of the United States. Here he is. James Comey is a danger to the country. There was a brazen plot to illegally exonerate Hillary Clinton, and if she didn't win the election, to then frame Donald Trump with a falsely created crime. Did you work with this guy? I did not. 
And what do North. you know of him? He's shortly, he was there shortly after mine. What do you um, think of that comment? I think it's outrageous and disgraceful, especially given that he is a former United States attorney. He knows how the Department of Justice operates. He knows how the FBI operates. I'm not saying everyone is doing all the right things, but as institutions, um, I think it's really unfortunate. But I think that's why he's the new, a new well, attorney exactly, on the team. All the experts who cover the White House say you hired him because you liked the way he looked sure. on TV. I was thinking, was he going to hire Better Call Saul next? I mean, what? <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, it, it, what was your reaction to what the gentleman just said? Well. I think he went too far. I think there are real problems at the FBI. I mean, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump agree on the fact that Comey handled uh, things in the election for very different poorly. reasons. And I, I right, but I agree with that too. And the other thing with um, uh, the number two, I'm blanking on the name. Rosenstein, we're talking about. No, 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 no. Um, McCabe, Andrew McCabe. McCabe. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the it was the Obama appointed Inspector General that said he should be fired in the Office of Professional Responsibility. But have you seen that FBI. bill of particulars? Nobody no, but, has. But, 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 well, yeah, but those, but those are nonpartisan, two nonpartisan organizations that have been critical of McCabe. So I think there's been incompetence, and I think there's been bias at the FBI, and those are legitimate concerns. I think saying that there's a conspiracy is irresponsible. He doesn't have the facts to support that. We've got to go. Carmen Ortiz, nice to see you. Mike Always Astrid, a pleasure. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you.